I'll tell you, I've, uh, I don't know if I met, I've been married 30 years, 30. So people ask, you know, younger couples, how do you keep the romance alive after 30 years? We don't. <laughs> Who needs that kind of pressure? It took me 20 years to get Tammy's expectations low enough to where I can meet him on a regular basis. <laughs> Why would I go ruin everything by being nice and loving and who needs it? I don't know. Some guy uh, wrote a book called Five Love Languages. Dr. Gary Chapman wrote a book called Five Love Languages. According to Dr. Gary Chapman, there are five languages of love between a man and wife. Tammy and I read that book twice in one week because we didn't see our love language in there. <laughs> Apparently, bitterness and sarcasm isn't part of Dr. Gary Chapman's love life. <laughs> but you got to talk, ladies. Got to talk. Get your men to talk. You got to get them talking. Bad things happen when you don't. I read in a paper a few years ago, a woman stabbed her husband while he was sleeping, kills him. You think they had some unresolved conflicts? Some counseling maybe that could have helped? She goes to court, her defense was, are you ready for this? I had no other choice. What? This implies that she had a list of things she was crossing off over time. <laughs> can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. Well, stab him while he's sleeping. Well, that's it, I'm out of choices. Ladies, if you're at that point in your relationship where stabbing your man is on the list, you need to talk to that man. And I don't care what he says. I'm busy. Oh, no. I, th I think you're going to want to hear this one. <laughs> I'm down to my last two choices. I'm either going to pour gasoline on you and strike a match, but why should I burn the whole house to the ground? After I'm acquitted, I'm going to need a place to sleep. Or I'm going to put a knife in your head. I guarantee you he'll put those golf clubs right down. Pull up a chair, get a cup of joe. What else is going on in that pretty little head of yours? <laughs> now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I've been fairly neglectful the last few years. What do you say you and I do something fun this weekend? We go antiquing. <laughs> and then tomorrow I'll have a spinal tap and some root canal. That'll complete the weekend for me. <laughs> but you gotta pay attention. Men, pay attention to your wives. My wife now started to watch this show, Dateline. Have you seen that show? A 15-year television franchise on spouses killing each other. Are you kidding me? You watch four or five Datelines with your wife, you'll look her in the eye and go, we doing all right, you and me? <laughs> What's with the note taking? <laughs> People communicate differently. My it took me two years of marriage to figure out my wife will never tell me to do anything around our house. If she wants me to do something, she'll ask me a question. It's from the question that I gotta figure out what it is she wants me to do. Simple example, say I leave a pair of my underwear in the middle of the bedroom floor, which is a hypothetical because we all know no man could possibly be that insensitive. Let's just say it happens. My underwear winds up in the middle of the bedroom floor, which frosts my wife. That's her word when she's angry. That just frosts me. If I'm not frosting her, I'm driving her up a wall. That's another one. Kids will come in, where's mom? She's up the wall with frostbite, that's all I know. And you won't believe what put her there, boy, was that pair of underwear in the middle of the bedroom floor. You are looking at the most powerful piece of cotton on the planet. <laughs> so I leave my drawers in the middle of the room, which frosts my wife. Now, would she come to me and say to me, pick those up. That's three words. Pick those up. Three words. Would she say them? No, because that would be simple, direct, and right to the point. And at that moment, I would know exactly what she wanted from me. I could process the information, make a rational decision as to whether or not I could deliver the request. We would then be communicating at the highest human level, the way God the Creator intended it, through language. <laughs> Tammy looks at me, looks at my underwear, then asks, are those yours? <laughs> well, I sure hope they are, otherwise I got a few questions of my own. <laughs> See, I looked at my parents, they were married 57 years, they had their own love language. It was beautiful. My, my mom, uh, they were married 57 years when my mother passed away. The last Christmas we had together as a family. We're sitting around the television watching uh, you know, Christmas movies, A Wonderful Life, whatever it was. We're sitting there, and out of nowhere, my father starts serenading my mother in their language. It was beautiful. He's in his chair, she's sitting over there, and then my dad starts. My mother got up and left the room, came back 10 minutes later with two hot dogs and a soda pop for him. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> so that night I'm laying in bed with my wife and I'm going, did you see that today? My parents, she goes, what? The parents, my parents, did you see the whole thing? She goes, I did. And I said, you think we'll ever get there, you and me? 
Tammy goes, shoot me if we do. <laughs> you start hocking hairballs at me like that, it's over, pal. That was the most disgusting, vile thing I've ever witnessed. I almost blew dinner all over the floor. <laughs> wow. I thought it was beautiful. I love my wife. I married a tough woman. Tough. First thing she did when we got married was take my spine away from me. She did. Keeps it in her purse. I mean, it's, it's handy in case I have to do something manly. Three o'clock in the morning. I heard a noise. Here's your spine. Go down and see what it was. I hate that wake-up call. She hears a noise. I got to go down. I, well, if you were sleeping, you wouldn't have heard it. Get down there. I don't want to go down there. Get down there. For what? What if it's a burglar? That's my point. I'm gonna stand in my underwear and tell him a few jokes? Come on. He's trying to be as quiet as he can. What's he ripping off, the DVD player? They're nine bucks, we'll buy another one. She should go down there. If he tracked mud on her new hardwood floor, she'd rip his thyroid out. <laughs>